Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to look at the stoichiometric concept of the limiting reagent. Again, something in my experience that a lot of students have problems with. So without further ado, let's look at an equation that we have used in other videos in this series. The reaction of nitrogen with hydrogen to give ammonia. So, balanced chemical equation, one mole of that, three moles of that, gives you two moles of that. Now, that is in an ideal world, okay? So, what is it that the balanced chemical equation is actually telling us? It's telling us that for every mole of nitrogen that reacts, we're going to require three moles of hydrogen to react with it, and that for every mole of nitrogen that reacts, we are going to obtain two moles of ammonia, okay? What a balanced chemical equation doesn't tell us is how far the actual reaction goes, okay? So in actuality, this reaction doesn't go to completion. Okay, so if you start off with one mole of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen, you don't get the reaction going all the way to the right-hand side and ending up with a sum total of two moles of ammonia. Okay, very far from it. What it does tell you is the mole ratio in which these guys actually react. So the reaction doesn't have to go to completion, but for every mole of that that does react, three moles of this are required to react with it. That's a concept that is uh, embodied in the whole idea of equilibrium, which we're not going to talk any more about today. We're going to concentrate on the stoichiometry here. So I guess in a perfect world, we would always be using one mole of nitrogen and reacting it with three moles of hydrogen. Our mole ratio would always be three to one. That's in a perfect world. However, as I'm sure you all know, our world is very imperfect. And what would, for example, happen if we had two moles of nitrogen reacting with four moles of hydrogen? What's going to happen then? How is that going to have an impact on our calculations that we're going to be doing in stoichiometry? <laughs> the answer to that question is it's going to have an enormous impact. Here, our ideal ratio is one to three. We're saying, no, let's start with two moles of this and react it with four moles of that. So the mole ratio there now is four to two or two to one. It's wrong, it's the wrong mole ratio. And what that means is in fact that one of these then become what we call a limiting reagent. Now, let's illustrate <laughs> literally the concept of a limiting reagent. So we've got, uh, let's say three blue atoms. One, two, three like so, and they react with three red atoms, and the product of that particular reaction are, are molecules that contain one blue atom and one red atom. So the molecules that we're going to get out of this look like that. Okay, so in other words, what we're saying is that three blues plus three reds are going to give us three, for want of a better word, blue reds. There's our balanced chemical equation for that particular process. Okay, And that works because the mole ratio is correct. It's a one to one mole ratio. So one atom of blue reacts with one atom of red to give you one molecule of blue red, or three atoms of blue react with three atoms of red to give you three molecules of blue red. That's great. Let's then change the actual amounts of the reactants that we've got. Instead of starting with three atoms of blue, we're now going to start with five atoms of blue. And we're going to react that with three atoms of red. What's going to happen? What's going to be the outcome of that particular reaction. Now here, this is your balanced chemical equation. That's telling you your mole ratio that these guys are reacting in. 
So it's a one to one or a three to three, call it what you will. For every atom of blue, you need an atom of red. Now you can see straight away that something's going to happen here. We know the actual reaction stoichiometry, one atom of that's gonna react with one atom of that. So we're gonna end up with three molecules of blue red. So what happens to these two extra blues? Because there's no more reds for them to react with. And so basically they get left over, okay? So if this reaction went to completion, we would end up with three molecules of blue red and two unreacted atoms of blue. So in other words, one of these is limiting the amount of product that we get, the product being the blue red molecules. Which one is, is, is limiting this? It's the reds, okay? Because the reds get used up first. Each red reacts with its opposite blue number. There are three reds here, so therefore those three reds are going to react with three blues, and because you've got an excess number of blues, then two of these have to remain unreacted. So those red atoms are what we call now the limiting reagent. They're called that because they actually limit the amount of product that you can get, okay? You can't get any more than three blue-red molecules out of this. Even though we've got our balanced chemical equation here, which is showing you your correct mole ratio, when the mole ratio isn't correct, we end up with a reactant that hasn't reacted. Okay, so uh, that's the reactant that is in excess. The other reactant, in this case, is now your limiting reagent. That is limiting the possible amount of product that you can get out of this particular reaction. Okay, so let's do an example. Let's go back to our good old nitrogen and hydrogen reaction to give ammonia. And let's suppose that we're going to start with three grams of N2 and one gram of H2. And the question then is, what is the maximum mass of ammonia that we could possibly get from this reaction? Again, assuming that the reaction goes to completion. There's the question that we have to answer. So this is going to be a limiting reagent problem. And again, um, one of the big clues that it's a limiting reagent problem, and you should look for this in your exam questions, is the fact that you're actually given the masses of both of your reactants in this case. So whenever you see that, think to yourself, aha, this must be a limiting reagent problem. So where do we begin? Well, we begin as we often do in a lot of stoichiometry problems by using the fact that we've been given a mass to calculate numbers of moles, amounts of substance. So therefore, we've got a mass of nitrogen, we've got a mass of hydrogen, we can then calculate the numbers of moles of both of those. So therefore, uh, the number of moles is equal to the mass over the molar mass. In terms of nitrogen, we have three grams and the molar mass, two times 14.01 grams per mole. And that comes out at 0 0.107 mole. Uh, for hydrogen, we do the same thing. So the number of moles of hydrogen is the mass 1.00 grams divided by molar mass of hydrogen, 2 times 1.008 grams per mole. We get that from the periodic table. And that comes out as being 0 0.496 mole. Okay, so again, as I sort of emphasize with these stoichiometry problems, if you don't know where to start and you're given a mass, calculate a number of moles and see where you can go from there. So we've done that. 
And we've got a balanced chemical equation. We know that our mole ratio, in a perfect world, one mole of nitrogen to three moles of hydrogen. Do we have the correct mole ratio for complete reaction between these guys? Uh, well, we don't know yet, so let's work that out. So we'll keep those two numbers of moles there. So for complete reaction, the number of moles of nitrogen over one should be equal to the number of moles of hydrogen over three. Should be equal to, okay. Now, is it actually equal? Okay, that's the question that we now need to answer. So the number of moles of nitrogen divided by one, here's our number of moles of nitrogen here, 0 0.107 should be equal to number of moles of hydrogen over three, 0 0.4. 96 over 3 and that is equal to 0 0.165 and we can see straight away that 0 0.107 does not equal 0 0.165. So that then is a characteristic of uh, a limiting reagent problem. That's what you're going to find is that you don't have the correct mole ratio. And when you don't have the correct mole ratio, that means that one of the reactants is going to be in excess and the other reactant is going to be your limiting reagent. That's, again, assuming that we have got only two reactants, which isn't necessarily always the case. Right, so where do we go from here? The first thing that we need to do now is having calculated uh, this mole ratio and finding that it's not correct, we need to identify the limiting reagent. Because remember earlier on we said that one of those blue atoms or the red atoms of the limiting reagent, that that determined the amount of product that we could get. So when we do it this way, what we find when we work out the mole ratio is that the smallest number corresponds to the limiting reagent. And in this case, the smallest number quite obviously is this one here, and that corresponds to nitrogen. So what you have shown by doing this particular um, method is that nitrogen now is the limiting reagent in this problem. And the amount of nitrogen present determines the maximum possible amount of ammonia that we can get from this reaction. So once we've done this, once we've identified the limiting reagent, we forget about the other one. Okay, so we can Forget about hydrogen now because we know that hydrogen is in excess. And so that doesn't matter. That's going to have no effect on the amount of ammonia that we can possibly get from this. It's all determined by the amount, the number of moles of nitrogen. So now we go back to our number of moles of nitrogen here. That's going to be the important factor in determining the number of moles of ammonia that we can possibly get. So the number of moles of nitrogen divided by one is going to be equal to the number of moles of ammonia divided by two, okay? So therefore, the number of moles of ammonia is going to be equal to, multiply those out, multiply both sides by two, two times the number of moles of nitrogen, which is equal to two times 0 0.107, which is equal to 0 0.214 mole of ammonia. And that now is the maximum possible amount of ammonia that we can get from this particular reaction. The maximum amount, the question asked for a maximum mass, and as you're hopefully aware, once you've got uh, an amount, and you know a molar mass, you can then get a mass, which is how we're going to answer this question now. We've got our amount here, so the mass is equal to the amount multiplied by the molar mass, and that is equal to 0 0.214 mole multiplied by the molar mass of ammonia, which is 14.01 plus 3 times 1.008 grams per mole, and if we multiply that all out, then we're going to get 
five grams of ammonia. And there is your answer. Okay. So that was quite an involved uh, problem. We had to do a lot of calculations there. Again, a limiting reagent problem. So in those types of problems, what it is that you're going to have to do, very probably, is calculate the number of moles of each reactant that you've got. You're then going to figure out if the mole ratio between them is correct according to the balanced chemical equation. If it's not, then one of them is going to be limiting. You identify the limiting reagent by finding that smallest number when you are going through and dividing by the stoichiometric coefficient. Once you've got that, you then base all of your subsequent calculations on that smallest number. That's what we've gone and done here. We start with three grams of nitrogen and one gram of hydrogen. The maximum possible mass of ammonia that we can get out of that is 3.65 grams. There will be hydrogen left over, but that's a problem for another day. So hopefully uh, this made sense. As I have stressed all the way through, uh, this is a very, very important concept in stoichiometry. You need to get your head around the whole limiting reagent idea. Hopefully this has helped, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>